Hello and welcome to a Paradise Killer gameplay demo. Uh, my name is Ollie and this is... I'm Phil. And we're the co-founders of Kaizen Gameworks, uh, the developers of Paradise Killer. Now, Paradise Killer is a first-person open-world murder mystery. You play the role of Lady Love Dies, who has been caught down from exile from this island up here, down to Paradise Island to investigate the mass murder of the... Uh, ruling council of the island so we have been given our mission uh, to investigate what happened and interrogate every one of these suspects and find the evidence and uh, with it being open world we allow you to go anywhere at any time and find the evidence and testimony in any order this is not a linear narrative game you are able to drive the case forward how you want uh, explore the island how you want and then at the end of the game you'll go to trial you choose when you go to trial you choose I, I you feel that you've got enough evidence to make a truth and then you go and present that truth to the court and the court will decide whether you've got enough evidence to prove it or not not whether you've got the right answer but whether you can prove the truth that you're putting forward and, and there isn't necessarily a right answer so you can accuse people okay. and the game supports that and it's not like in in some murder mystery games where you can have ending A, B or C, we don't have that. Um, Paradise Killer lets you accuse who you want and the game will support that and it all depends on what evidence you have. If you've got good, solid evidence, you can probably get that conviction you want. If you've got weak evidence, it might fail. And the judge character will be in charge of determining just how successful uh, your investigations have been. Yes, it's, uh, at first it's all about the evidence you present and how you present it to make your case. So, this is the building. This huge concrete structure is where is the uh, building, the council building, where the murder took place last night that you need to investigate. And this looks suspicious. <laughs> A big pool of blood, quite suspicious. <laughs> so this is Lady Love Dies. This is uh, your character that you're playing as. And she is uh, the investigation freak. Uh, she's been called out of exile to investigate this crime to end all crimes and she's found this knife and the official version of events is that Henry, someone possessed by a demon ten years ago, broke out of prison last night and murdered the council. And this is the the supposedly the weapon he was found with, this knife here. So we've just examined that and the blood checks out. It's got the blood of the council members on and it's got some blood from these two murdered guards up here. So at the entrance to this building, um, there were guards stationed. So let's have a look at this crime scene. Crime is repulsive. Now, you mentioned that there is an official version of events, and that is explained to you during the introduction phase. And Henry Division has been the one accused of it, and not without reason. There is a good reason why he could be um, the one who killed the, the council, committed this mass murder. And it's up to you to either choose... Well, you can, you can follow that through, so you can try and find evidence which supports that, or you can find evidence which goes against that. It's up to you to decide if you're going to follow that official version or try and find out some of the version of events that went on. What truth do you want to follow? What and and every hell? truth is valid. Every truth that you want to present is valid. You're not trying to find the definitive true answer. You are looking to... Like, truth and facts the are facts mutable and, and are uh, open to interpretation. And it is up to you to determine what you think... What the the truth is, and then push that forward, and that your truth that you may decide on early uh, will hopefully change and adapt as you find new evidence and speak to different suspects. I mm. don't like this. So we've found that there's something suspicious, highly suspicious, with these marshals, these soldiers, is that their blood doesn't match uh, the official mm. records of uh, marshal uh, blood samples. Uh, so, have these uh, guards been swapped? Got it. Are they imposters? Have they been body swapped after the after the events? Um, what is going on here? Because uh, this is very strange. They've also had is their throats cut with uh, what Lady Love Dies is assuming is a damaged blade because the lacerations across the throat are ragged. And there's also these 
uh, demonic symbols daubed in blood. Here, so these are the symbols. During the introduction, we jumped a bit into the game a few minutes in. You would have been told that these symbols are from the prime suspect, Henry. Uh, his body is covered with those symbols after he became possessed by a demon. Uh, so it looks like he daubed them in the victim's blood as some kind of uh, ritualistic marking. Marking, But is that what actually happened? So that's the building uh, where the murder happened. Uh, we could explore further into the building. Uh, but for the purposes of this demo, we're going to go and explore the top of the building. And we need to take a kind of roundabout route to get here. A lot of the level is level design is based around kind of open world interlocking areas. So you'll see some of that in a minute when we we're going to go up to the roof of the council building. But there is a way straight back down to the door there that we were just at with the guards. And uh, here is Shinji. <laughs> Shinji is a demon that came to the island during Henry's possession ten years ago, and he is this anarchic goblin like obnoxious character that says he wants to help says he wants to help you do your investigation and give you some pointers and he will help with some stuff but he's actually just uh this kind of freewheeling uh anarchic here for a good time he loves chaos yeah right? character like he will, yeah he's caused chaos he loves the fact that this island has been plunged into chaos, you know, the crimes to end all crimes that's occurred, and he's having a great time with it. Yeah, he's uh, just here to see the chaos happen, and uh, to watch this secret society crumble under the weight of uh, the crime to end all crimes. So we, we've, we've established he is not a suspect. Like, yes, so there's a lot of story why reasons not. why. So, and, um, You'll meet a lot of people on the island, and they, they are, but Shinji is established very much as not being a suspect. You can understand why it would be being so chaotic, but he's not. But here is someone. So this is someone we weren't expecting to meet, or the player wasn't expecting to meet. This is One Last Kiss. And uh, she has suddenly appeared, and wants to kind of play a game. And speaking of playing games, the choices you are making are significant. Mm -hmm. like these, um, we've seen a few little options there where you could choose how you wanted to respond to, to dialogue. And whether you choose A or B does matter. And it can change the course of some investigations. So she wants us to go and find something. She is acting suspiciously and says there's something that she needs us to find. Uh, this is our currency. Shinji, who we met earlier, has scattered this currency around this island. He robbed it from a bunch of people and to try and help us. Uh, it's not the most helpful thing he could have done, but we'll take it. And we can you use should have platforming around here as well. So one of the things that we've established is if you can see somewhere, we wanted to explore it. We don't place rules, like there's no fall damage. You can jump down to go and explore that area. You can try and Brand navigate in a way which isn't just up the stairs, you, know, you can try and crawl around the, the, the edge of a building or something. Um, and exploration really is a big part of this, so that's why we, we don't have fall damage and it's why we we let you jump off um, off ledges and over over gaps because that is a good way to, to try and really get into every nook and cranny of this island and we want you to do that. It's a nice sunset. Yeah, we have a dynamic day-night cycle and weather system uh, that changes as you play, so you'll be here for a few days uh, watching the cycle happen. Uh, right, so we have got to the roof of the council building. How exciting. Uh, and there's a bunch of evidence. So one of our rules is if it's pink, you can interact with it. So we can see some stuff here. These tyre tracks. So Lydia is your oldest friend. We met her I need to uh, in the intro this. to the game. So you've already, the player would have already met her. And Lydia is the only one on this island with a car. And what is strange about her car, you might be wondering why there's tire marks on top of her building, is that her car travels through different realities. She, she slips in and out of reality to transport people around. So um, 
that explains why she's managed to get her car up here and possibly makes her a suspect because what is a car doing on top of this council building? It's supposed to be a secure building. It had guards posted out the front. That's strange. Um, and this is a bit more suspicious. So there's some repellent gear here. I need to investigate this. So maybe that got us in. That got someone in behind the guards, the murdered guards that we found behind, uh, found earlier, uh, and maybe that could have allowed you to kill them. Uh, yeah, it and looks it like that goes down to a ledge over there. Yeah. So. so someone tried to use this rope for something on the side of the council building. So we can see there's an item down here and then an item down there. So we should go and investigate those. Again, no fall damage, so we can just explore freely. Some more currency. But what was this repelling line doing down here? Well, here's something. There's a drag mark there. Go into this grate. That's weird. Okay. If someone's forced that grate open. I need to investigate this. So someone's cut that open. The security, the anti-tamper seals have been cut, uh, and you need a thin blade to do it. And there is some kind of drag mark going down in here. Uh, <coughs> this we can see. We drop down here. There's your boy Shinji again, but we'll ignore him for the moment. We're down back where. Uh, we first investigated. Ah, uh -huh, those dead bodies. The dead bodies. Excellent. So we can now see how someone might have used uh, that uh, rooftop entrance, repelling down to to get past those guards. Yeah. But we haven't done up here. So we saw there was something else down by the sea. So let's go and have a look at what that was. There it is. A knife. And it says, always yours, Sammy babies, and being engraved into it. Now we know that means that it must belong to Lydia because her husband is named Sam. But there's no blood I on it. I need to investigate this. So maybe it wasn't used, or maybe the blood was uh, washed away. Uh, but the blade is damaged. And that's important because the great, the maintenance hatch up there, that we just looked at, has been forced open. And that would have caused some damage to the knife. And also the guards that we found earlier had their, their throats have been cut, but they weren't clean cuts they were ragged gashes so a perfect blade a nice new knife wouldn't have done that something damaged would have done that so maybe we've, that knife was used we've um collected quite a lot of information there and obviously it's quite a lot to track and we've, we've only really just started the game so do you want to show how we collect and organize this information so as you find as you speak to people and get information you get these investigation notes to give you a, uh, a potential lead on how to investigate and where to go next. It never spells it directly out for you, but you know, some hints about what you might want to do. And then we've got these case files. So this is Starlight, this interface here. This is your uh, investigation assistant laptop. And so we've got all the current suspects here. You see Lydia and Stan are there, so yep. we know their husband. There is a, a populations tab within Starlight, which explains relationships and backgrounds to characters as well if you want to refresh her. So here's Lydia. Uh, and here's you, Lady Love Dies. And this is our prime suspect, Henry. And... Oh, wrong button. Uh, let's look at the case files. So these are the current crimes we're investigating. The crime to end all crimes. The mass murder that happened last night. Uh, well, during that's the intro, what you've been brought here for. Yeah, this is why you've been called out of exile. During the intro, we also got told that someone called KHX is missing. And the guards that we just investigated is the Holy Seal Marshal case. So let's look in here. And we can see the evidence that we've collected has all been categorised. So the player doesn't need to kind of compartmentalise the... The, or assign the evidence, Starlight processes it uh, and uh, assigns it to where it needs to be. It is up to you, though, to 
like Starlight will never form the conclusion for you. You need to read through all of this and understand it and interpret it, and you decide what the truth is. So we found four pieces of evidence against Lydia. Uh, the damaged grate, the knife, the repelling gear, and the tire marks. Now, the damaged grate would not have been assigned to Lydia uh, when we first found it, because there was nothing tying her to it. But when we found her knife, it proved... Uh, it gave us a possible tool that might have been used to open up that damaged grate uh so starlight updated it so this was originally unassigned you can see that we've we've got some other unassigned evidence uh over here we've got a, a murder weapon but we haven't proven whose murder weapon it is so it's unassigned at the moment yeah. and that's where a that damaged grate would have been until we found other evidence to tie her to it yeah a lot of evidence is mutable so um it's it's not always solid when you do find something like the grate. You just know it's a damaged grate. It's not until you find something else that we can start to link it either to a potential suspect or to a potential case file. Um, so as you go through the game, you will pick these things up. And Starlight just helps you understand where they are. So later on, as you collect more, as your parents go to trial, you can start to look at things and say, well, I've got a lot of evidence against, you had a lot against Lydia there. I'll read through it. Do I believe? this is a strong enough case to convict Lydia. Do I want to believe Lydia has committed this crime? Uh, do I want that to be the truth? And it's up to you to then interpret that how you want. And uh, our music system is cool and unique. It, it plays through, these, uh, through speakers dotted around the world. Um, it plays in world rather than uh, like most games do just in kind of a 2D space. Uh, to, we wanted to try and emulate the feeling of uh, being in a mall and yeah. exploring uh, a, a, an environment where the music is part of the environment. So uh, you start off with a number of tracks and then you can find more music to add and build a playlist with. So you can customise which tracks you want to hear and in what order. Yeah, we really wanted it to be part of, of, the, of the island and the island is really one of our characters in many ways so it's all about just trying to make everything feel embedded and because you can control your playlist it's kind of your hook into the island as well mm. so there are several times um that when we did those scene investigations earlier you can sort of jack into the island system to glean information and so you can also jack into it to control the playlist uh one of the things we wanted to do with making a first person narrative game is really like explore what we could do with the exploration and give people something to master, some platforming ability. So we've got jump and we've got sprint. Uh, but you can also unlock extra um, upgrades, movement upgrades, uh, from these foot baths. And uh, that was important so that the player gets something to master and learn how to use, but also to kind of surprise and subvert expectations. Which That's is like strange. How many story based narrative games are. Uh, like in this kind of style, are you getting, uh, well, in this case, an air dash? Mm. Uh, how many, like, you don't unlock that in a lot of uh, first person narrative games, so that is giving us, you know, an air dash, so that allows us to get further and higher. Uh, so that allows us to find more areas, uh, like hop between buildings and do more exploration to find hidden evidence. This is a locked gate, but what if we were to just hop over it oh nice and subvert that yeah so this is like the islands are weird you probably noticed that the the island scenario is a bit strange you've got this demons walking around and we really wanted to support that in every way we can and these little moments of magic where you unlock a new movement system or you're able to platform into an area that you um you wouldn't expect to be able to go to it's it's kind of the heart of what we want our games to be it's all about player-led interaction we don't want to tell you the story we want you to interact and create your own story. Yeah, and your own path through. Like, oh. You never have to jump through any kind of logic hoops or narrative hoops to unlock part of the island. If you want to, the, the route that we took at the beginning of, of the demo, where we went from that top of that building into the, the council building, and then to the top of the council building, and now here, but like, you might not see those areas for six hours. You might oh. take a totally separate route, go to the other side of the island, meet some different suspects and uh, have a totally different uh, route through the game. So that was just a phone call from someone else on the island, Crimson Acid, 
Um, this is our augmented reality mode. And uh, she has just added herself to that AR mode and is telling us to kill a meter because she sells uh, secrets and she wants to help. Let's unlock this gate. But yeah, she has a lot of access to high-ranking syndicate members and she's been collecting secrets for years and yeah, we can now talk to her and find out maybe what she's been doing with those secrets. Yes. Is she completely innocent in this? And find out what people don't want us to know. But first of all, since we've got all that evidence from Lydia, let's go and track down Lydia. Yes, good idea. So we have already met Lydia as part of the introduction. She transports you from Paradise Gates, which is, I will show you in a moment. She transports uh, you from that to, to meet Judge. So, this is your prison up here. You were in the Idle Lands up here, and you got called out of exile, out, since you are the investigation freak, to come to the island to solve this crime. But everyone's got something to hide, so this is especially true of your oldest friend, Lydia. We found loads of evidence about it. It could all be nothing. Uh, we have only investigated one small section of the island yeah. and really focused on one character, but yeah. we should ask her about it. You know, no investigator should just take stuff at face value. Hey, Ozzy. Hey, so here you're catching up with Lydia and uh, talking about how, how you're doing so far in the investigation. So Lydia is the fairy woman. So this is the 24th Paradise Island. Every island fails because it gets corrupted by demons. And uh, when an island fails, a new one is uh, created. And these islands uh, exist in different pockets of reality. And Lydia, using her car that travels through realities, takes these syndicate members from island to island. So that was what she was just talking about there, where she was getting people off this island onto the next one. So when we come to talk to a character, we've got a couple of options. We can hang out and just go and chill and just get their thoughts on love and life and everything that's going on. Uh, or we can talk to them about some case files. So there's a bunch of things we could ask. We could ask about her alibi or one of the other case files. But what we've been investigating is the Holy Seal Marshals. Oh. So we've we just grabbed loads of evidence. So there's a number of things we could talk to her about here. There's a lot to, to get through. So let's start with a fairly innocuous one. What do you know about this? These are uh, first seal marshals. Mm -hmm. Huh? So nothing. Okay. <laughs> that was quite abrupt. But yeah, okay. she hasn't got anything to tell us about that. So mm. let's dig into some of the things that we found. Uh, let's ask her about Why? the tire tracks. What did last night? Fair enough. Okay, so that she's mm. denying it and saying it's innocent, but that is still trespassing on the most secure uh, building on the island. Yeah. So we could try and be suspicious about it, or we could. I'd say go suspicious. I have nothing to do with this. <laughs> sure. So she's denying it, uh, oh. but we found out we found some repelling gear up there as well. Is she linked to it? Claims Again. it's not her repelling gear. Yeah, okay, straight denial. So let's find out about the well, the knife or the gate break. What? Oh. So she left That's the knife a while ago. Strange. Come on, LD. So if she lost it a while ago, is someone setting her up? So she's either lying or someone oh, is setting yeah. her up. So it's up to you to go and then think about how how you could prove either one of those, find some more evidence and mm. chase down this lead. I'd hope she wasn't lying. She's supposed to be one of your oldest friends, you know. I know she's probably not going to admit to a murder, but... <laughs> if you can prove it, sure. So she's given us nothing. 
She has absolutely. Yeah. She's denied everything. Let's. Uh, we haven't got loads of time left. Let's go and ask her. We'll ask her about her alibi. Oh. Let's see if we can put her at the scene of the crime. Oh. So on the night before the end of this island, she is doing her duty, her role of ferrying people to the next island, taking them through the Paradise Gates. Mm -hmm. And at the Paradise Gates, there's a computer which logs all activity. And so uh, we can go and check that now. She also said she was with Sam. Yes, so we can go and speak to Sam, her husband as well, and uh, see what he's got to say about it, see if their stories match. She's explaining a bit more about how this process of movement between islands work. Right, so um, yeah, let's not hang out. Shall we see if we can catch her out? Maybe ask Sam the same question about his alibi. See if, if they mm -hmm. uh, if they match. So where so is Sam? It, so Sam uh, is up here. We need to get there. Cool. It's so so far. You know, Lydia's not been that helpful. Um, she's claimed. That the evidence you found either you got really nothing to do with it like the tire track sure she said she was there but ages ago the knife she'd lost it a while ago not her repelling gear so she's not been that helpful she's not really confirmed or denied and right now we don't really know why she would even be part of this crime yeah i mean we have got an official version of events that was given to us during the intro that says henry did it all he got off his prison island uh his Henry is imprisoned on a rock out in the ocean over here. You can see it just between those trees there. And the official version of events is that Henry broke out of his prison and got into the council building and murdered the council. And that yeah. might be what actually happened. And it, he has a history um, which kind of supports that a little bit. Yes, he's previously so. killed uh, a number of people on this island when he became demonically possessed. Oh. And... Um, that puts him as a, a prime candidate. He was found outside the council building with a knife and a belly full of uh, the victim's blood. So I'd that say does... that's slightly more compelling than finding a knife. But then we don't know. Like, it's our job to investigate. Mm -hmm. So Sam here's Sam. Break. I love Sam as a character. Hey, Fantastic healthy character. Sam so Sammy and Lydia met thousands of years ago or everyone here on this island the syndicate are all immortal they they formed this island to uh worship their old alien gods and try and resurrect them and that's what this island is is for and so that's where we get demons because as soon as you have gods you have demons and uh they lydia and sam were both assassins oh, you know, when suspicious. the gods gods ruled uh the world and they were they're tasked with killing each other, but they fell in love, and Sam refused to die because uh, he loved Lydia so much, and uh, that's how he became a red skeleton, obviously. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a really nice story, like love conquers all. Yes, so even death. Lydia and Sam are suspicious because they're ex-assassins, uh, but now they've both renounced the life of assassination, and Sam runs this bar. And he is obsessed with whiskies. He blends a new whiskey every island. Everyone on this island has their role and they, they're very passionate about it. Right, so uh, we haven't got much time, so shall we just go straight for the alibi? Yeah, let's see if he confirms Lydia's story. So we've logged his testimony now. And it matches. Yes. So, you know, that kind of goes in Lydia's favour a bit, but then it is, of course, her husband. 
But so. we still have, yeah, it's her husband, so, you know, of course they're going to batch stories. And we also yeah. haven't checked those computer logs. Yeah, so that would be the next step because those computers are proper logs on the island. It's something uh, you can jack into and you get the absolute truth from the island about what happened, who was there and when. So we can interrogate that and see if it if it truly does confirm or deny the uh, the alibis. So let's look at what we've got here. Lydia and Sam daybreak. So this is we've logged both their Sam's testimony and Lydia's testimony mm -hmm. uh, in the, the alibi section of the case file. And again, the Starlight isn't drawing any conclusions for you. It's up to you to interpret this and then decide how you want to go and investigate this. So yeah. uh, we have a note here uh, to go and look at, confirm the alibi with the Paradise Gate logs. Mm -hmm. So that will be the next step if we want to pursue that. Or you know, we've got all these other leads. Yeah. What about the second seal? All this stuff. So we could go on either pursue Lydia and Sam or... Go down a different route entirely. Yeah. Excellent. Well, unfortunately, we don't have time for all of that. So I think we ought to leave it there mm -hmm. and just say thank you for watching this stream of Paradise Killer. Um, we're very excited. It will be released soon. So keep your um, ears and eyes peeled for um, a date for that soon. And if you want to follow us, we are at Kaizen Gameworks on Twitter. You can also chat to us on the Fellow Traveller, our publisher. They've got a Discord channel, so look for the Fellow Traveller Discord channel, um, a Discord server, and look for the Paradise Killer channel in that. Um, and we've also got ParadiseKiller.com, KaizenGameworks.com. So if, you, if you're interested, check us out. And of course, you can wishlist the game on Steam right now. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much.